So good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Shazia Khan, and today's session is the unit is Equal Opportunities and Diversity. And today's session is an assignment discussion session. So before I go on to the assignment discussion session, I'm just going to go briefly through all the learning outcomes with you and what we did in each learning outcome. So there's three learning outcomes that we went through. Um, I'll just briefly go through them. So you've got an outline of what we've done in them learning outcome. And also you've got an idea of what you need to cover when it comes to your assignment. Also, I'll be showing you the uh, assignment brief that is available on Moodle and a lot of the information from the assignment brief, brief sorry, is on this assignment discussion slides. And um, these slides will be recorded and they will be um, put onto Moodle for you to uh, complete the assignment and also work around doing different areas of the assignment as well, okay? So before we start, is there any questions about today's session? Esperance, Sandra? Okay, so we'll start with the uh, recap of the last, uh, last three learning outcomes before we go into the assignment discussion. So the first learning outcome we looked at is learning outcome one, which was to understand different types of prejudice, stereotyping and oppression. And in learning outcome one, we looked at what equality was, and what diversity and inclusion meant within um, a, work, a workplace and how it uh, looked at elements of respecting and valuing differences in people. We also looked at in learning outcome one, equality and diversity in health and social care and why it's so important that we treat everyone equally according to their needs and you know, we give them that equal opportunity. We also looked at the difference between um, inclusion in health and social care and why that is important and why that is needed within the health and social care profession. We looked at the Equality Act 2010 on elements of discrimination and looked at the protected characteristics within the Equality Act 2010, which are age, disability, gender reassignment, marriage and civil partnership, pregnancy and maternity, race, uh, religion or belief, sex and sexual orientation. We, in learning outcome one, uh, we also looked at direct and indirect discrimination and when that occurs within a workplace and gave you some example. We looked at uh, discrimination on the basis of labelling, stereotyping and prejudice and what that meant. Uh, we also looked at 1.1, which was to define and analyse examples of prejudice, stereotyping and oppression. So what prejudice is, and we looked at the main causes of prejudice. Uh, we looked at stereotyping and gave examples and looked at the main causes of that and also the also same question. Okay, has anyone else joined? Hi. Um, Alu, hi, are you okay? So we're just going through, I'm just giving you an overview of what we've done in the last session, okay? Last three sessions. So um, we also looked at the principles of social psychology, including the ABCs, which is affect behavior and cognition. We then went on to look at learning outcome two, which is um, looking at knowing explanations of the origins of prejudice, stereotyping and oppression. <clears throat> So we looked at what prejudice is, we looked at what discrimination is and differences between prejudice and discrimination. We looked at the different types of prejudice based on things like gender, race, sexism, it may be on religion, uh, it may be on age. We also went on to look at um, 2.1, which was to evaluate explanations of the origins of prejudice, stereotyping and oppression. We then went on to look at the element of the theories of prejudice, which are things like uh, the first one we looked at, which was uh, created by someone called Henry Tajfell, which was the social identity theory um, that establishes a person's sense of self comes from their overarching group background. So people are put into a group for everything. So, you know, a family is a group. So we looked at the social identity theory. We then went on to look at the scapegoat theory um, is uh, placing the blame on someone else. Um, we then went on to look at the authoritarian personality um, built around a, a person's personality, which is quite rigid and aggressive. 
Uh, and then finally, the culture theory, theory which is uh, prejudice is inherent in cultures through elements of like prejudiced uh, cultural norms, um, undue influences and what people are told. We then went on to look at uh, stereotype definition in regards to sociology and we looked at the positive and negative stereotypes. We looked at positive stereotypes and gave you some examples as well. And then we looked at what intersectionality is in regards to positive and negative stereotypes. We defined uh, discrimination in learning outcome two, and we looked at the origins of stereotyping and that when it was established, uh, which was um, in 1850s. We went on then to look at the early theories of stereotype and looked at uh, Katz and Braley and what their classic theory was on ethnic stereotypes. Uh, we then went on to look at the origins of oppression and what it actually meant. So that was learning outcome two. So we've done learning outcome one. I've given you a brief outline. Now learning outcome three, which I'll give you a brief outline of what we did in it before I start the assignment discussion. So learning outcome three is to understand issues relevant to equal opportunity and diversity. We looked at, again, equality and uh, in, within health and social care and why it's so important that we have um, an element of equality with that. And we need to take into account things like you know, people's age, their ethnicity, their gender, their sexual orientation, um, you know, the type of illness someone has, uh, if they've got any physical or mental impairments, religion. Um, we then went on to look at 3.1, which was to explore and explain origins and principles of equal opportunity uh, within health and social care. We also looked at what is equality, why is it's equality so important in health and social care? Um, so making sure that policies are in place, making sure that, you know, there's good equality and diversity practices in place and they are fair and accessible to individuals as well. So we also went on to look at how to promote equality in health and social care and things like, you know, the structure in, in putting in policies in place and making sure that there's no inequalities, making sure that people are trained. You know, that's really important uh, in regards to, you know, um, training people around equality and diversity and, you know, implementing policies in place, because if you implement policies in place, uh, then people are going to follow them policies. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the main thing is they should follow the policies. And um, training, you know, you should offer elements of training on equality and diversity so people have a knowledge. Um, and it's easy to make prejudgments and assumptions. So uh, trying to make a connection with new patients, you know, the fact that all patients uh, are not, you know, cannot speak properly and have dementia, you know, that's a pre-assumption that we've got, pre-judgment that we put in place. Um, and we also looked at uh, how we should treat people on the basis of, you know, a person-centred care in regards to equality, treating everyone the same, you know, no, um, you know, no uh, unfair treatment, make sure that everyone is treated equally. We then went on to in learning outcome three uh, to define the concept of diversity and why it's so important in the UK. Uh, working and living in the UK, we have a diverse uh, culture of people, you know, and we need to make sure that we are looking at treating everyone equally and, you know, taking into account everyone's interests, their beliefs, their lifestyle. Um, we then went on to look at the characteristics of society that make it diverse. Uh, so we looked at interests, beliefs, age, lifestyle, personal characteristics, cultural uh, identities. We then went on to look at 3.3, .3, which was to provide and analyse examples of positive and negative practice and the role of legislation. So why legislation is important in any business, in any health and social care, what the need of uh, legislation is positive and disadvantages of legislation, why we need legislation, why we need to adhere to legislation, because if we breach legislation, then there's a legal requirement, there will be a legal action taken against us. So we looked at legislation uh, such as the Human Rights Act, Civil Partnership Act, Gender Recognition Act, the Equality Act, 
and uh, the Equality Act 2010. And I gave you a link to go on uh, in elements of looking at them. OK, so that was briefly and quite quickly gone through the learning three learning outcomes we've gone through. Has anyone got any questions on that before we start on the um, assignment discussion? So we've got Josephine and Olu on now as well. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Um, so if you, we're going to start with the assignment discussion. So the assignment brief, I'll show you first. So you know that you've got an idea of how the assignment brief looks when you are on Moodle. Um, because the assignment brief is there. The assignment discussion is just identifying things that I've taken out of it. So this is how the assignment brief looks. Can you all see that? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. So this is assignment brief. This is how it will be on Moodle. So you need to fill in this. So you need to put your student name in, your centre in there, your tutor's name, which will be my name, and then it tells you how many words you've got, what the assignment title is, uh, the date set, okay, the date due is really important, and then the date submitted. When you submit it, you need to put that date in there, okay? So these are really important elements of this form you need to fill in. What you'll do is you will read the student declaration, and I'll go through that, and then you sign the student declaration. The word count is there, and you need to confirm that you've submitted a bibliography, uh, you understand that you're not copying and pasting, and this is your own work. Um, any contributions, research, reference, that you've referenced all your work, you've attached a bibliography, and you've done the word. The work needs to be done in Word, in the Word, not in PDF, but needs to be done in Word, okay? So you need to start the assignment from that. So that can be your front cover, and then you start doing the assignment in Word. So this is the assignment brief, which we're going to go through. Just give me... So that's the assignment brief that we need to go through. Hello, sorry about that. My my internet just went a bit air wall. So So these, this is what is required of you in the assignment, which I'll go through because we've got it in the assignment discussion session, okay? So you've got an element of that. Um, and then these are some of the, learn, the learning outcomes we've gone through and what the expectation is in your assessment criteria that you should be doing. And this is just the comments on the students and, and this is the reading about the knowledge, understanding uh, and elements of what is expected of you and what you would get a merit and a distinction for. Okay, so this is on Moodle for you. Um, I'm going to go into um, the slides now. So, just one minute. Can you see the slides now? Can you all see the slides? Hello, can you all see the slides? I can see uh, the unit equality, opportunity yes. and diversity. That is, so that's the PowerPoint slides, yeah? yeah? Okay, so that's good that you can all see the slides. So the slides um, we're going to go through now. So it's an assignment discussion session. The unit you're doing is equal opportunity and diversity. And the unit code is that code there. So, the learning outcomes, you need to understand different types of prejudice, stereotyping and oppression. A learning outcome two is to know explanations of the origins of prejudice, stereotyping and oppression. And learning outcome three is to understand issues relevant to equal opportunity and diversity. So, this is the assignment declaration. And I did show you the last declaration in on on that one which uh, on accentus so different awarding bodies have different declarations and you are signing the declaration to say that the work that you've submitted is your work that you have not copied the work you have not plagiarized the work and you have not copied anyone else's work or taken chunks out of something and not referenced it 
and you are signing a document. So it's literally a contract that you are signing to say that the work that you have submitted is your own work, that you've submitted a bibliography or a reference list, and that you have referenced all your work and you have not used AI. You can use AI up to only 20%, but we recommend that you don't use AI because it makes you, you know, the assignment is not, um, it's not acceptable, okay, because it's a form of plagiarism. So avoid using AI. Uh, make sure you are signing the declaration on the Accentus form, which is on Moodle, the assignment brief. Make sure you are declaring that the work is all yours and you are not cutting and pasting work. Okay, so this declaration is on Moodle for you to do. So what information needs to go onto the assignment at the start? So on the front cover, you need to have your name, you need to have your centre number, you need to have your tutor's name, your registration number, the word count in this instance is 2000, and your student signature needs to be there in regards to the declaration that you sign, that it is your own work, and the date of submission. So, you know, what date you submit your work. Make sure you put that on because that is so important. And also, when you are submitting it, make sure you identify what you are aiming for, a past merit or distinction, okay? Unit level is health studies, and the unit is called equal opportunities and diversity. Any questions on that before we carry on? Sorry to ask, which registration number you can have it? Your registration number is on your, uh, when you have got your uh, Moodle, you know, when you're logging into your Moodle? That registration yeah. number, that is your registration number. And also your regist registration number is one you have given with all your letters and everything on. It will be on there. Okay. okay? Yeah. That's your number, okay? So yeah. plagiarism and collusion, and this is really important. Students must submit and complete work that is their own. That is the declaration that you are signing as well. Plagiarism is presenting the thoughts, ideas, and words of other people as if it were your own. Collusion may occur when students' assignments are very similar and in some cases identical of another fellow student. This is also amongst to play amount to plagiarism. Plagiarism is taken very seriously and students are recommended to refer to the academic misconduct policy, which is available on Moodle for you or on the virtual learning environment. So you need to make sure that you are referring to that, okay? And you are make sure that you are referring to the academic misconduct policy in regards to, uh, you know, any sort of issues of plagiarism. But make sure you reference your work and do not plagiarize your work. At the start of the assignment, so you need to include the following. You need a table of contents. Why do you think it's so important to have a table of contents? Anyone? Why do you think it's so important to have a table of contents? It's important because you know, it identifies to the person marking it that you've done the work and it's on this page, okay? Font size needs to be 12. There needs to be 1.5 line spacing. And it needs to be in Microsoft Word format, not Google not Google, not PDF, nothing else, okay? It needs to be Microsoft Word format, okay? And you can use the free uh, Word Microsoft Office and you can download it from that app there. Look, I've given you the link there. You just need to link, um, press that link and download it if you don't have Microsoft Word. We will not accept anything that is not in Microsoft Word. It needs to be in Microsoft Word and not Google or PDF, okay? So make sure you submit that. And if you don't have it, download it from here. Page numbers need to be inserted so that when you're doing the table of contents, you can have the page numbers in there. You need to have an introduction and you need to make sure you are putting all your assessment criteria in the headings, which will go through each way. General information. So this is just informing you that we have a platform which is called Moodle and handouts and eBooks and all the information is available on there and all the recordings and all the sessions are available on the um, Moodle for you to go onto. All any information. If you if you struggle to get onto Moodle, please email learnerwork at ukvarsity.co.uk if you struggle with anything. Okay. So some study skills that you are, will develop throughout doing these assignments are things like critical thinking, 
planning and organizing and time management, things like research, gathering information, note taking and summarizing, analysis, written skills, academic skills, including referencing, and IT skills and reflection as well. So now we're going to go on. Have you got any questions of what we've gone through just now before I go on to the tasks? Anyone got any questions? Okay, so we'll go on to tasks. Task 1.1 and 2.1, okay? And this is what we need to do for task 1.1 and 2.1. So firstly, you are to write an essay titled Prejudice, Stereotyping and Oppression. Your essay should be based on one of the following contemporary issues. So it could be on any of them or any one that you get approved with your um, supervisor. So you could write about the oppression of minority groups. You could look at the law, race and development of Black Lives Matter movement. You could lo look at the gender, gender pay gap, sorry. Or you can look at masculine senses, <clears throat> masculine spaces within education or the National Health Service. Or you could have an idea of your own to be approved by your subject tutor. So if you've got, you can, you know, it, there's, there's some interesting ones there that you could look at and you could look at basing your, the elements around any of them issues, okay? So within your essay, you must ensure you include a definition of prejudice, stereotyping and oppression. So for that, you will look at learning outcome one pages 11 onwards, okay, to give you an idea of how to answer that question. You could use other sources out there as well. It doesn't necessarily mean you just stick to the sources on, on the slides. You also, so this is your heading. Do you understand? So this will be your heading, not, not the learning. When you're writing, so this, how many parts is there to that? Heading, heading. How, how many parts is to that one? Can, you, can someone tell me how many parts there are to that one? Two parts. No, three parts. Three. Look. Three parts, okay? There's three parts to this one. Um, and you need to... Oops, the thousand word style there has gone down. Um. Uh, so there's three parts to this part of the assignment, okay? So there's one is there, a definition of prejudice and oppression. So you will put that as a heading. Do not change the wording. Whatever the wording is asking, you keep the wording as mm -hmm. it is, okay? Don't change the heading. So that's the first part. You write the definition of prejudice, mm -hmm. stereotyping, and oppression. And mm -hmm. that you write under that, okay? Mm -hmm. The second part is examples mm -hmm. of prejudice... Mm -hmm. Stereotyping and the oppression of, in relation to. Can you mute I yourself? Sorry. Do that. Okay. So the second part of it is examples of prejudice, stereotyping, and oppression in relation to your chosen contemporary issue. And that is what your second part is. So you would put that as a heading and you would write under that. Okay. The third part of the first the task is an evaluation and the origins of prejudice, stereotyping, and oppression in relation to your contemporary issue. So you will be referring it back to one of your contemporary issues there, any of them, and then you would be doing this evaluation, okay? And this would be learning outcome two pages five onwards. Now for all of these, the maximum word count is a thousand words, okay? So do you understand when I tell you to put each one under a heading? Just Everyone understand? Esperance? Esperance, yeah. do you understand? Yeah. Josephine, Olu and Sandra, do you all understand that? Yes, I can understand. Yes. So each part is a heading. Each of them is a heading. Not Don't put that learning outcome one. I've given you that as helping you go to it, okay? And each of these is a heading. Do not change the wording of the heading. So each of them is a maximum of 1,000 words. What would you write about that then? How much would you do for each one? Would you do about 300, 
25 words for each one. Yeah? Is that right? So if the maximum is a thousand words, what would you do for each one? Because you've got three parts there. Thousand divided by three. Yeah. So three about three hundred and thirty words, yeah? For each one. So it needs a maximum of thousand. You can't go over the thousand words, okay? Is there any questions on that part of it? No, any questions, anyone? So the next bit is 3.1, task 3.1. In task 3.1, you are looking at explaining the philosophies considered to the origin of equality and equal opportunities. And that's looking at learning outcome three, pages four onwards. And for that bit, you have to do 300 words only. So this would be your heading. Make sure you put it as task 3.1 and then put this down. Explain the philosophies considered to be the uh, to be the origin of equality and equal opportunities. And it is only 300 words that. Okay, so you need to make sure you write about that. Then we move on to task 3.2. And in 3.2, you are looking at defining diversity. And that is learning outcome three, pages nine onwards. So you would need to be using other sources outside as well, but it is only 100 words for that. Okay, so defining what diversity is, learning outcome three, and it's only 100 words. Okay, then we look at task 3.3. In task 3.3, this is your heading. So you've only got one part to do. Analyze the role of legislation in relation to equal opportunities and diversity. Provide examples of positive and negative practice within a setting of your choice. And that is learning outcome three, pages 12 onwards. And for that task, you need to be doing 600 words, okay? And this is all on the assignment brief as well, which I'll show you in a bit, okay? So that is, do not change any of the wordings. Put each one as a heading, as it is. Do not change the wordings, because, you know, it's, it's for the person marking it to identify that you have, you know, done that part of it. So you need to make sure you are not use, uh, not taking out any words or anything and use the words as it is. Any questions about the tasks? No, thank you. No, okay. So referencing, you need to be using, um, if there's academic sources and reliable sources, but the system that we use for uh, the UK Varsity is the Harvard system of referencing. And this must be included at the end of the work. So you need a bibliography at the end of the work to identify that, okay? Again, at the end of the assignment, make sure you have, at the start of the assignment, a very brief uh, introduction, maybe three or four lines. And at the end of the assignment, a conclusion to conclude everything, maybe three or four lines. And then again, reference list and bibliography, and it needs to be in alphabetical order, okay? And it's the Harvard system we're using, which I'll show you when we go back, which systems online as well that you can use. Assignment guidance and uh, support. Make sure you start with an introduction and conclusion, which I've informed you of. Make sure you are using the Harvard system for referencing, and you can refer to online sites such as Neil's Toolbox. And I'll show you how to use Neil's Toolbox as well, okay? At the end, okay? So if you are using diagrams, please make sure you reference them accordingly where you've got your work. So make sure your work is referenced accordingly. Try to use more examples when explaining certain concepts. For example, looking at theories and um, uh, you know examples of stereotyping, diversity, maybe give it proper examples and up-to-date examples. Make sure you are using the assessment criteria, the heading for each part. For example, task one, as I've said, use it as a heading. Do not change the wording. You need to be referring to indicative content all the time and checking your word count. Uh, give proper sub uh, headings and subheadings. Do not use bullet points. Make sure your work is presentable and professional and make sure it flows. The only things you will be having is headings and subheadings, but avoid using any bullet points. It needs to flow. Okay. 
important points, ensure at least six to 10 references have been used. Uh, keep a check on uh, word counts, so 20% tolerance AI. Make sure you are under that and make sure you uh, avoid using that. The word count for this assignment is 2,000 words. Remember, there's a grading in this uh, course. Do not use AI software to write the assignment. There's only 20% tolerance allowed, else it will be considered malpractice, which I have referred to at the start, plagiarism. Make sure you do not use the AI software. Please mention the grade you want to achieve in the unit, if it's graded unit, so that the feedback can be done accordingly. So if you want to get a pass, make sure you identify you know, but in this one, I, I think there's only elements of a, there's only one resubmission in the Accentus assignment, okay? Following the numbering on the assignment presentable as against the assignment brief. Some useful tips here. Read the task carefully. Read what it is asking you and look at the word limit as well. Focus on the task and the command verbs. Command verbs explain, define, describe, assess, examine, clarify, and compare contrast, critically evaluate. Um, make sure you are using referencing. Uh, so if you reference your work in the main text, you use your author and the date in brackets. If you're doing it in the uh, the bibliography, you put the full uh, citation, okay? The full reference. Um, and also give proper headings, make sure your document is presentable. Um, and the word limit on this one is uh, 2000, okay? So this is not, this is just a standard written on it, but it is 2000, okay? So you, your maximum is 2000 for this assignment. Plenary, you may need to make sure you're not copying and pasting as it's plagiarism. And I keep go, I will keep going back to plagiarism because that's really important when it comes to doing your assignment. Make sure you reference all your sources and all your academic books you've used, any e-books. Make sure you you check your grammar and spelling. And that has been an issue because a lot of people use American for organization. You know, it's not a Z, it's an S. Make sure you are checking your grammar and spelling and punctuation. Refer to e-books and journals on Moodle for this unit. Also, if you're using UK Varsity Slides, then referencing will show as MDT 2022 Bibliography. And in your bibliography, you'll put multidisciplinary teams, learning outcome one, slide number two to 10, UK Varsity published on the date. So that's how you would reference that, but you need to make sure when you're using it in text, when you're doing the assignment, you are referencing it like that, and then the full reference in the bibliography at the end like that, okay? Again, any queries, any questions, email learnerwork at ukvarsity.co.uk. Submission of the assignment to be done on learnerwork at ukvarsity.co.uk. And please, please reiterate what mark you are expecting to get. Assignment submission within two weeks of completion of the unit. Now that the unit is completed, you have two weeks to submit the assignment, okay? What I'm going to go back to do is just to show you on this um, Neil's toolbox. So if you go onto this Neil's toolbox, we'll open the link up here. Tell me if you can see, and this shows you, this helps you reference your work as well. And it gives you an idea of how to reference. So I'll just bring that there. Okay, so I'll share it again now. So can you all see this? Has anyone ever used Neil's toolbox? Has anyone used it? Josephine, Esperance? Or no, You've no, never no. used it? No. no, it's really interesting because this is, so here it tells you what you want to reference. So choose a type of reference. So if you're taking anything from a book, you will use that. If you're taking anything from a website, you will use that a chapter of a book, an e-book, you will use that. So let's just use an example, referencing a book, okay? So let's put the book name, Equality. Just an example for you, okay? The um, author, Smith J, so the surname first, then the initial. The publisher, it could be Peacock. The place it was published, let's put London, okay? The year of publication, 2023. The edition, it could be fifth edition. And then what we do, it says generate reference. Can you see that? 
Can you all see this, yeah? Yeah. Yes. So you generate the reference. Look, it's made it for you. Can you see that? It's actually made it for you. So what would you do with this? What would you, where would you put that? It tells you here, copy and paste into your bibliography section. This is at the end. Because you've used the internet source or you've used a book, this is how you reference it. And it puts the dots and the commas in the right place for you. Okay, so you will copy and paste this and put it in your bibliography at the end. Do you understand that, everyone? Josephine, Esperance, Olu, Sandra? Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. yeah, and it's an easy way to do it because it helps you put all the dots and the commas in the right place. So if you're doing that, you just copy and paste that. Now, if you're doing an internet website, let's just use this, okay? Website. Copy. If you're referencing a website, the organization, so let's put ERM equality, article name equality. It's just an example. This is the website name uh, ERM. And then the published, uh, it's published on 20th of May 2023. And then year publication 2023. Uh, let's just put that, take that out. Then they put the you copy and paste the the actual URL number, the website from there. So you just copy and paste that. You go to generate and it's made it for you. Can you see that? There are other websites, but a lot of my students tend to use this because it's a lot easier. So this is done it for you. Can you see? And it tells you where you've accessed it, what date, today's date. And then you copy and paste this and put it in the bibliography at the end. Do you all understand that? Yeah. Yeah? Esperance, uh, do you understand that, yeah? Yeah. Sandra, Sandra is that? It's yeah. quite a good website. There's different websites. Josephine, Olu, uh, you could use this one to help you. This is really good. Um, but it will it will do it for you. It you you won't be expected to put the dots and commas in the places. This will do it for you. Okay. Is everyone okay with the referencing side? Yes. Excellent. So I'll stop sharing that, but the link is on there for you to go on to, um, and you know I'll. You could go on to this, this other ones as well, like cite me and things like that that you could use. So any questions you have about the assignment, please ask now. If you're struggling with any tasks or need any guidance, please ask, um, and I will go through them with you. But um, <clears throat> this is all recorded and it's all on Moodle for you, okay? So the slides are all on there, the links are there. Please take into account all the elements, the general information, the uh, information and guidance about your assignment. Avoid plagiarizing, make sure you're referencing, make sure you stick into the word count as well. Make sure your work is presentable and not using any bullet points or anything. Um, but what I'll do now is I'll again show you the assignment again on Moodle. Um, it is on Moodle that you could go on to and have a look at it. Uh, and have a look, have a read of the assignment brief as well. It will help you. So literally the assignment brief is what we've done in the, what I've put in there. Uh, this is your declaration. So you need to sign that and put your word count in there as well. And your signature would be there. Uh, and then the assignment brief is literally what I've gone through with you. So it gives you the word limits there. It gives you each task, how much is expected of you and what is expected of you in the tasks, your learning outcomes, uh, your what you've done. Uh, 3.1, 1.2, each of them is in each learning outcome. Okay, so this is on Moodle for you to have a look at. Make sure you are reading the declaration before you sign it to say that you've referenced your work. This is your own work. You've looked at the policy. You've taken into account. You've referenced it. You've used a bibliography and you've stuck to the word count, uh, word count and you've taken on board all of Accentus, which is your, word, uh, which is your awarding body policies and procedures for dealing with malpractice. Make sure you fill this in properly. 
your student name, your centre details, tutor name, and your date submitted and uh, the date set as well. And the date is due. So you need to make sure you have filled all that out. This is all available on Moodle for you. OK. Has anyone got any questions before we finish off? Yeah, just before you leave the, the correction page. Yeah. Uh, where do we start writing our assignment, please? Sorry? Where do we start writing our assignment? Assignments? Where do you start what? writing? Yeah. What do you mean? I don't understand. Where do you I start not... writing? Yeah, where do we start? Like, when you start your assignment? The assignment so from is from now. You've got two weeks from today. No, I mean on the page. You do it on a doc. You do it on a Word document. Do you know what Word document is? Microsoft Word. Yeah, but yeah. We, are we not going to take this one like on the top of of our assignment just to fill it in? So do we well, have you to? Can, you can put this. You can put this at the front of the assignment. Yeah, that's what I was. I was yeah, you can put this at the front of the assignment and then start working on the assignment. But it needs okay. to be in a Word document, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So because you know they don't like they don't use Google, they don't use PDF. It needs to be a Word document. So yeah. you know that that you can start from here. Um, is it Josephine? Yeah. Me. Who's asking? Is uh, um Esperance? Who was asking? Was it Sandra? Mommy. It's me, Esperance. Esperance. Oh, express. You can just work from here because this is a Word document and you can write into each one. Can you see each one? That's your uh, element. So that is what is expected of you. Then you would just write under it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you could use this as your first setting because it has your declaration assignment front cover on it as well. Is that OK? Yeah, thank you. It's okay. Have you got any other questions, anyone? I think it's enough. Are you sure? If there's any questions, <laughs> Esperanza, <laughs> Sandra, Josephine, Olu, please email us on learnerwork at ukvarsity.co.uk. Okay. okay. And thank you for attending today's session. And it was lovely meeting you all and teaching you. Um, and hopefully good luck with doing your assignment. Thank you. You've been a good teacher as well. Hi, thank you. Oh, Hello. thank you. And Hello. Uh, yeah. Excuse me, you are mentioning names. Can't you see my name as well? <laughs> uh, which one is it? I'm looking almost there. Okay. Sandra, Esperance. Yes. I'm just looking at who's on there. So Josephine. <laughs> yeah. So um just make sure all of you. Uh, you've got two weeks to do it. I'm not ignoring you, don't worry. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, uh, so, Alu, uh, just make sure you've got two weeks to do it. Um, make sure if you've got any questions, just email us. Have you got any questions, Alu, before we finish? Alu? I think now you're ignoring me, Alu. <laughs> <laughs> So if anyone has no questions, we will finish the session and thank you for attending and good luck with you doing your assignment, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was lovely meeting you all. Thank you. Thank you.